Meanwhile, Russia has test launched its Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile. It's a new addition to the country's nuclear arsenal. And Vladimir Putin has said that the missile will give Moscow's enemies something seriously to ponder about. However, underplaying the threat, Pentagon has said that it does not deem the test to be a threat to the United States and its allies. The Pentagon spokesperson, John Kirby, further said that the test was a routine one and did not come as a surprise for the Americans, asserting that Russia had notified the United States ahead of the test of the intercontinental ballistic missile. Meanwhile, in a televised address, Vladimir Putin said that the weapon will strengthen the combat potential of Russian forces and will ensure that Russia's security from external threats is secured. Now, Putin's comments have, of course, come at a time when Washington has said that it finds Putin's rhetoric to be unhelpful, further asserting on how they don't expect a responsible nuclear power to do such a thing, especially in the current environment. The Sarmat is a new heavy intercontinental ballistic missile, one that Russia is expected to deploy with about 10 or more of the warheads on each missile. It is designed to elude anti-missile defense systems with a short initial boost phase. This would also give enemy surveillance systems a tiny window to track. The missile has been under de development for years, so, it is, so its test launch is actually not a surprise for the United States. But the timing is crucial here, especially in the context of the Ukrainian war. This truly unique weapon will strengthen the combat potential of our armed forces, reliably ensure Russia's security from external threats, and provide food for thought for those who, in the heat of frenzied aggressive rhetoric, try to threaten our country. It comes just days after the U.S. tested a new hypersonic missile. The hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept was launched from a B-52 bomber, but officials have released very few details of the missile test. Meanwhile, the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia have also vowed to cooperate on hypersonic weapons. The AUKUS will begin collaborating on hypersonic missiles and strike capacity as Russia and China advance rapidly in the cutting-edge technology. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what this missile test by the Russians actually means in the context of the war in Ukraine, we're joined in by Dr. Lada Roslicki, who's joining us from Ukraine. She's, of course, the founder of Black Trident Defense and Security Consulting. Now, Dr. Lada, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us on Vyond. You know, the first question that I'd want to ask you is the fact that Russia has decided to test this missile at a time when it is involved in this war in Ukraine. What message is Russia trying to send you? Well, it's clear that Russia is trying to continue to petrify the world. Uh, and there's a really good chance that this uh, particular intercontinental ballistic missile uh, will not be used. But the real threat is really looking at um, the possible use of smaller tactical nuclear weapons, ranging from mines to artillery. And uh, basically, Putin has not been put on his place. And the longer he is allowed to uh, escalate the situation, the much, much more difficult it is going to be to, to bring it to an end. Now, at this point of time, you know, uh, in the context of the missile test that has been done by the Russians, now the Americans, for their part, have said that they also want to develop hypersonic missiles. Russia, we're given to understand, has used hypersonic missiles in this war that it has waged on Ukraine. Do you think we are on the cusp of another arms race here. Um, definitely, and and actually, I don't think that the arms race really ever ended. It just shifted into it, it morphed into a different uh, format. And we should be reminded that last month the Russians do claim, and it has been accepted by the Russians, that a hypersonic missile was used to hit a place called Delatin. And what is little known about Delatin is that this is a place with radioactive and chemical uh, storage, which NATO had been working on with Ukraine for many years to try to uh, clean that area out. And it also has uh, older uh, mines of uranium. So we're, we're combining very dangerous weapons, and we're seeing Russia use these we weapons against not only civilian and military bases, but critical infrastructure that includes chemical uh, weaponry and, and nuclear stations. 
You know, it's interesting that you, you should mention the target that the Russians went after with their hypersonic missiles because it is being said that although many countries have been developing hypersonic missiles, this is the first time that a hypersonic missile has actually been used in a field of battle. You know, in this war that Russia is waging against Ukraine, is, is Russia now trying to send the message across that militarily it is right up there and even if the West would try and expand with its NATO military alliance, that Russia is, is in fact ready with the weapons that it needs? Well, Russia has the weapons. Whether it has the moral and ethical backing to be using them, is the answer is simple and it's no. The onus is on other countries, let alone uh, the NATO al allies, but countries such as uh, India itself, to really decide what type of future uh, they you want to have. Do you want to be cooperating as, as intensely as you are with the Russian Federation as it pertains to the, uh, the military and defense industry? So it's really a, a critical period in, in a world history to really make decisions and choices. And uh, the Kremlin has to be stopped. And just letting this continue and, and uh, hoping that, that they will wake up somehow and say that they're wrong, it's just not going to happen. Deterrence is not working at this point in Ukraine. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Lada Roslicky, for joining us and getting us all those insights there on this big developing story that we're tracking on Vyond. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.